Hey Valley Metal, welcome back. Tonight we're going to learn how to multiply mixed numbers, but first our creepy question of the day. What is what was a safety coffin and what was its purpose? Do, 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 do. There's my Twilight Zone music. Let's get to the target officially. 5.5b. I can multiply mixed numbers without the calculator. Let's do this thing. Alright, the problem du jour. My lovely wife Martha makes two and a half dozen cookies in each batch. She makes three batches. How many cookies did she make? Or how many dozen did she make? Well, you've got two and a half dozen times three batches. What do we do? Well, we've got to change that mixed number into an improper fraction. So you say two times two is two plus one is five. So two and a half is the same as five halves. We'll go over that in a little bit. Then you multiply it by 3, which is 3 over 1. 5 times 3, 15. 2 times 1, 2. If you divide that out, you'll get 7 and a half dozen cookies. Nice. Makes sense. 3 times 2 would be 6. 3 times a half is 1 and a half, so 7 and a half dozen cookies. Let's see what's hiding down here. Just a little note. Remember, that's how we got there. 7 times 2 is 14. That takes care of 14. And then there's still one left over, which becomes the half. 7, the leftover, is half. 7 and 1 half. All right. Here we go. Must know words. Mixed number. That's a whole number with a fraction, like 3 and a half. An improper fraction, that's a fraction where the denominator is smaller than the numerator, or numerator bigger than the denominator. So here we go. We have three and a half times ten. Well, we got to take and switch this to an improper fraction. So three times two is six plus one is seven. So that's how I got to seven halves times, of course, ten over one. We end up with seven times ten is seventy. Two times one is two. Seventy divided by two is thirty-five. It's as easy as one, two, three. But first, my friends, we need a little review. I've done it a couple of times here. I've changed a mixed number into an improper fraction, but I wanted to take you through it step by step. Here's a mixed number. It's 4 and 1 fourth. To change that into an improper fraction, you multiply the whole number times the denominator. 4 times 4, you get 16. You add the top number of the numerator, giving you 17. So 4 times 4 is 16, plus 1 is 17. I wrote it down here too. 4 times 4 is 16. Then you take 16 plus the numerator gives you 17 fourths. I'm going to let you look at that for just about 30 seconds. Make sense? Good. You'll need to know how to do that proficiently tonight to work through these examples. All right, multiplying mixed numbers. Here's our first example. We've got four steps this time. That first step now becomes changing the mixed number to an improper fraction. So we have 4 9 tenths times 1 half. So we only have one mixed number here, but 4 times 10 is 40, plus 9 is 49 tenths. So now we've got 49 tenths times 1 half. Um, just take that straight across. 49 times 1 is 49. 10 times 2 is 20. We've got 49 twentieths is our answer. Now, you've got to take and rewrite this because that's an improper fraction. So there's 20 pieces in a hole, so I subtract one hole here with 20 out of 20. I subtract another hole with 20 out of 20. So I've got one, two, I've got two holes, and I've got 9 twentieths remaining. There's my answer. Okay? All right, let's take a look at another example. This one here is 2 and 2 thirds times 1 and 1 eighth. I've worked this problem two ways, reducing ahead of time or right away, and then reducing afterwards, so you can see it. All right, so here's what it is, 2 and 2 thirds times 1 and 1 eighth. So 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8 thirds. So here's my 8 thirds down here. This one is 1 times 8, which is 8, plus 1 is 9. So I have 9 eighths. That's where that came. So I've rewritten those mixed numbers as improper fractions. Multiply straight across, 8 times 9, 72. 3 times 8, 24. If I divide both of these numbers by 24, I'll get 3 over 1. Or if I just take 72 and divide it by 24, I'm going to get 3. Depends upon how you want to do it. Either way works. 
Your answer is three, okay? I want to show you this problem reducing ahead of time uh, um, earlier too. Same problem, two and two thirds, one and one eighth. Here I have eight thirds, and here I have nine eighths. But watch how I did this. I had eight and eight here, so I divided by eight, I had one. Divided by eight, I have one. Here I've got nine and three, I can divide by three, so I'll divide by three, it's one, three. Divide by three up here, it's three. I end up with rewritten, these uh, fractions rewritten as one over one and three over one. One times three is three, one times one is one, three over one, which is still three. So it kind of depends upon um, how you want to do this. If you're having any trouble at all with it, I would just multiply the fractions, the numerators and the denominators, and then reduce. This mess here, if you understand it and you give yourself enough paper and work neatly, it's beautiful, simple, less mental math. But in this case here, having 72 over 24, these are numbers that you're going to be able to work with. And even though you won't be able to use a calculator, you will be able to work down from that and figure these numbers out. Okay? All right. Uh, multiplying fractions. Here's the three bottom lines for multiplying fractions or mixed numbers that I want you to take into consideration when you work through the next couple problems. First rule, turn any mixed numbers into an improper fraction. For instance, two and a half becomes five halves or five over two. Got to do it. Got to change mixed numbers to improper fractions. Second rule, just multiply straight across. No common denominator needed. Third rule, Reduce those refractions or rewrite them when you get to the end in case you have an improper fraction or if you have uh, six eighths, you need to reduce that down to three fourths to express it in simplest form. Okay, here are two problems you can try on your own. First one, one and two thirds times two and three eighths. Go ahead and pause, you go ahead and pause the video and give it a shot. Go. I see ten people. I haven't said that in three videos. It's allowed. All right, here we go. Well, I rewrote this. One times three is three, plus two is two, five thirds. So I have five thirds here, and I rewrote this one. Two times four is eight, plus one is nine. So I wrote nine fourths. Simple rewriting. Okay. I'm not, there's no, well, actually, I could reduce right here, but I'm not, I didn't do it. Five times nine is 45. Three times four is 12. I end up with 45 twelves. Uh, again, I like to think of it this way. Take out a group of 12, a group of 12, and a group of 12. So here's 36, or a total of 3. So 45 minus 12 minus 12 minus 12 gives me 9. So I end up with 3 holes and 9 twelfths remaining. Now the way of looking at it is 3 and 3 fourths once I simplify 9 twelfths. Okay? Hope you got that one right. Here we go. Here's another one. 3 and 1 fourth times 2 and 2 fifths. Go ahead and pause it and work through that. All right, I'm back. Let's see which, how you did. Well, 3 times 4 is 12 and 1 is 13 fourths. 2 times 5 is 10 and 2 is 12 fifths. So, I, this time I decided to reduce. I divided by 4. So I got 1 down here, I divided by 4 here, and I got 3. 13, whoops, now I'm down to here. 13 times 3 is 39. 1 times 5 is 5. 39 fifths. I did this one a little bit different the way I reduced it. I knew that 7 times 5 was 35. So that's going to give me a total of 7 holes. And then I said I have 39 in the numerator. Minus that 35 leaves me 4. So that becomes my new numerator. So I have 7 and 4 fifths. Let me just check to see if it equals 39 fifths. Just reverse it. 7 times 5 is 35. Plus 4, 39. Smooth, isn't it? All right. Okay, here are your uh, two questions to uh, try for your ticket. I'll pause for a minute and let you write these down. 2 and 2 fifths times 1 and 1 fourth, and then 1 and 3 fourths times 2 and 1 half. Okie dokie. The trivia question. What was a safety coffin and what was its purpose? Kind of creepy. Sometimes they used to bury people alive, so what they did was 
for a while they had uh, people patented a safety coffin which would have a string that hung down underneath the ground with the bell up on top that way if they buried a person alive the person could pull a string ding 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 and ring the bell letting them know that hey there's a guy who's alive in that coffin same type of design here too this is the British version creepy that's the last thing I want to think about I'm a little claustrophobic all right Thanks for listening. Hope you learned how to multiply mixed numbers tonight. Have a good evening. Bye.